When I observe the present condition of Hollywood and the mainstream film industry, I recall the plight which afflicted the Russian cinema poet Andrei Tarkovsky. For those unfamiliar, Tarkovsky is one of Russia's most eminent filmmakers known for his works such as Andrei Rublev and Solaris. He doggedly fought with the Central Committee to bring his films to fruition. Facing the fierce scrutiny of the committee, who censored cinema made in Russia so that it would align with communist propaganda, Tarkovsky was often cunning and slipped through their clutches. Upon editing Rublev, a historical epic which follows the 15th century icon painter, he deliberately made scenes unbearably long so that they were removed from the picture rather than the scenes precious to him. His religiosity was repeatedly assailed by the state authorities. While making his first science fiction feature, Solaris, Tarkovsky was demanded by the committee to remove the concept of God and cut out anything remotely Christian. Throughout his diary, Tarkovsky expresses his exasperation with how few films he was able to create as a result of the Soviet Union's totalitarian mandates. Within his short lifetime, he was only able to give us seven films. I am baffled by how many people in the United States continue to settle on seeing another Hollywood blockbuster filled with pretty faces and everything that denounces the values and principles they hold dear. I'm even more staggered by how many aspiring filmmakers silence their true beliefs and convictions to satiate the depraved ideologies driving the industry today, hoping it aids their career. When in actuality, this repression means death to their art, and instead of becoming artists, they become political automatons. If this insincerity and toleration is left unchallenged and unaddressed, then cinema will surely die in our country. Hollywood movies used to be the epitome of our culture here in the United States, brimming with the principles and ideals that established our remarkable nation, emphasizing what is true, good, and beautiful. There were spirited filmmakers such as Frank Capra and William Wyler, and ardent performers like James Stewart or Charlton Heston. Theaters used to be called palaces, where seeing a film was the equivalent of attending an opera. The architecture surrounding the screen was a celebration of Western culture, nesting the art of filmmaking in its great lineage. I suppose this is one motivation for calling Hollywood's era of buoyancy the Golden Age, despite many factors that did not make it entirely golden. But alas, we have dispensed with it all for the brash, pornographic hogwash now projected in large black boxes. At this juncture, I believe a distinction must be made between Hollywood and cinema. One is an art form, the other a corrupt oligarchy desecrating it. There was a time where cinema flourished in the arms of Hollywood, but those days have since dissipated. Its previous nurture has become its chief enemy. We have come to an irrevocable point where new alternatives must be erected and upcoming generations of filmmakers create their own industry. Our civilization finds itself in a state of intense skepticism, asking questions such as what is just, what is good, what is true, what is beautiful once again. If our art continues to revel in obscurity and meet us with depravity and ugliness, then how are we as Americans to overcome the unprecedented division and disharmony we suffer at this moment? What we experience in cinema ought to clarify the common linkage between us as human beings struggling to exist in this world as spiritual creatures, the very things that go beyond mere politics, celebrity, and social media. It is beauty that binds us as a civilization. It is beauty that calls us to be more than what we are. It is beauty that united and sustained us as Westerners, and now we have abandoned it for abhorrent redefinitions glorifying the devastation of our shared culture. For without a culture, there is no civilization. It is my objective as an independent filmmaker to revive cinema as art. My voyage begins with a feature film I've written entitled Poets in a Modern World. It is a look into a college instructor's yearning for the past 
and his pupils' disquietude for the future in the midst of modernity's maelstrom. Both live in the realm of poetry and grapple with their relationship to reality. The student reproaches his family of Philistines, and the instructor pines for the family he lost. It is a story about home, the necessity of tradition, and choosing beauty in a world defying it. We are in need of resources, talent, and funding for this project. The production will cost $25,000 to make. Any contribution, great or small, is welcomed and can be made on the contribution page found at the Morning Dove Films website. A short film excerpt taken from the screenplay, named A Moment is Enough, can be viewed online as well. You may sign up for a newsletter to receive periodic updates regarding Poet in a Modern World's progress. I invite those onto this great voyage who desire to combat the uglification of our age, those who seek higher things, those who wish to see a more beautiful world, not a perfect world, but one that we can harmoniously belong to, and not just for the brevity of one's lifetime, but for all posterity. Each step of a miracle is the heart of an individual, and we can only create beauty if each of us continually chooses it. So let us choose it unfalteringly, unshakably, with due patience and persistence. We may not see the fruit of the seeds we sow today, but there is the promise made by those of tomorrow that it will be well worth our toil. Thank you for your time.